In this project, I used long short-term memory recurrent neural networks to generate music. Recurrent neural networks take as input their hidden state from the previous time step, along with whatever else they have as input. Um, so this allows them to remember information through, throughout long periods of time by passing that information through their hidden state. Uh, LSDMs, or long short-term memory recurrent neural networks, are a type of recurrent neural network that is most commonly used today. Um, this is an image of their architecture right here. This unit in the middle is called the constant error carousel, and it contains recurrent self-connections of weight equal to one, which allows it to remember information. Uh, and then the information in these cells is regulated. Um, the model regulates this access to this information with three gates, the input gate, the output gate, and the forget gate. Uh, and I go into a bit more detail explaining the advantages of these of LSTMs over normal RNNs in my project report. But for now, let's move on. Uh, so I, tra I trained the LSTM RNN on the Nottingham Folk Music data set, which contains 340 songs uh, in ABC notation. So this is uh, one song right here. Um, you can see it's got a little header that with the title of the song, the time signature of the song, stuff like that. And then you can see all the notes right here. Notes are encoded with letters from A to G. Um, notes that are in quotes are chords. So this is a D chord right here. Um, yeah, so this is a pretty simple song. Uh, it just has like six or so notes per bar, two, one or two chords per bar. Um, and most of the songs in the folk music data set are around this complexity level. But later I try to train on a more complicated data set to see how the model does on that. But for now, uh, let's see how this one does. So the way the neural net works is it takes one character as input. This character is mapped to a unique table with um, the torch lookup table module. And then this input is passed through one to three layers of LSTM and dropout. And then the output from that sequence is passed through a linear layer to a log soft max layer which outputs a log probability distribution over the characters. Then uh, I train the model to predict the next character of the ABC notation file, given all the previous characters of the file. So I just pass it in one character and tell it to minimize the negative log likelihood of predicting the correct next character. Um, and you just train it with RMS prop, like a form of gradient descent, um, like you normally do with uh, neural networks. So this is a graph of the validation loss per e epoch of training on um, the data set. Uh, I tried three different model sizes with one, two, and three layers. Uh, well, while well, I did a second layer, made the model perform much better um, than just a single layer. Uh, three layers didn't have much of an effect beyond how well the model with two layers performed. Um, the best validation loss was around 0 0.5. And this is an example of the generated music right here. Um, so the way you generate music once you have the probability distribution over characters is you just uh, feed one character into the model and tell it to predict the next character. And then you, you sample from the probability distribution that it generates and um, put that sampled character back in as input to the model and use that character to predict the next character. Uh, and then you just keep doing this. So the model just keeps predicting characters and writes out a whole file like this. So this is one file. You can see it learns ABC notation pretty well. Um, it, it learns the header and notes look pretty reasonable. But let's not rely on our um, just like looking at it right here. I'll play you a sample of the music. Give me a second to pull the music up. Um, OK, here it is. Okay, so that's that's probably enough for now. Um, sounds pretty good. It seems like the model is learning um, to match notes in the melody with the chords. Um, it seems like it's learning pretty reasonable chord progressions, um, and it sounds pretty good. I'd say at small time scales, like one or two bars, it's uh, almost indistinguishable from the uh, the training data, at least to my ears. Um, so one other thing to note to mention is that uh, when the 
when I'm using the model to generate um, these files, um, generate the music, when I'm sampling from the probability distribution, I can pass in the a temperature argument to the model to affect how the model samples from the probability distribution. Um, basically, what I do is I divide the log probabilities that the model generates by a temperature value. And so if the temperature value is less than one, then this uh, skews the probability distribution towards more likely characters and away from less likely characters. So in the limit, as the temperature goes to zero, the model will always choose the most likely character. Um, whereas normally it's, it's actually sampling from the probability distribution that it generates. Um, and then if you give it a temperature greater than one, it's like uh, making less likely characters more likely and making more likely characters less likely. likely. So I'll, give, I'll show you um, a couple uh, different examples of different temperatures. This is a, uh, some music that a model generates with a temperature of 0 0.1, a very low temperature. So it sounds pretty good, but it turns out that the model just keeps generating that song over and over again. It doesn't generate any other song. So that is the song that the model thinks is the most likely. <laughs> um, however, if we have the model generate music with a very high temperature, like 1.5, then we get a more creative output. So that sounds pretty interesting, but uh, you can tell it's a little bit sketchier. It's playing notes that sound a little bit off occasionally. Uh, moving on, um, since that worked pretty well, I decided to try a more complicated data set. Uh, I found a data set with over a thousand songs of all different genres. So like uh, the Beatles, like holiday music, uh, video game soundtracks, stuff like that. One of them's depicted here. So one major difference of this data set is that instead of just uh, having encoding the name of the chord, it actually encodes the whole chord as a note, as, as like each note of the chords. So you can see here, uh, all these notes within this bracket um, are a single chord. They're all played at the same time. And the same with this uh, set over here. So notes within brackets are played at the same time. So that automatically makes the data set quite a bit more complicated. Um, so I, I first tried training a model with three layers at a hidden size of 512 on this data set. And it didn't really work that well. So I tried a larger model, but that didn't improve the results at all. So I graphed the validation loss curve here. Um, you can see it evens out at about like 0 0.9. And um, this is a little excerpt of what the model generates here. Uh, let's listen to it. that's enough. Um, so you can tell it doesn't really sound that great. I think the problem is, although this data set is larger than the previous data set, I don't think it's large enough to make up for all the uh, diversity contained within the data set, like all the different genres of music. So unfortunately, that wasn't very successful. It does generate interesting chord progressions and melodies every now and then, but for the most part, it's not a uh, doesn't resemble actual music. So the last thing I tried, um, I'm running out of time, so I'll be quick here is to train the LSTM RNN to generate the raw audio waveform directly. So the way I did this was I took the uh, DFT of a Bach WAV file, uh, WAV file. Um, then I used this as input to a two-layer LSTM RNN and trained it to try to predict the next DFT window given all the previous DFT windows. So this is a little different um, because it, generate, it doesn't generate a probability distribution. It just generates the window directly. Um, it turns out this didn't work at all. Um, it just would repeat the same output over and over again. So I tried one other thing. I tried a uh, raw audio auto encoder, but I'm out of time, so I'm not going to go over that. Um, you can read about it in my paper. <laughs> so thanks for listening.